So I know what you're probably thinking. The title of this video was Solar Hot Water Heater. This looks like a big chunk of wood. Well, <laughs> you're right. So um, basically what we have here is my solar hot water heater that I designed and built um, primarily for camping trips and um, situations where your hot water heater is broken uh, if you have electric hot water heater, the electricity is out, that type of thing. So essentially it allows me to make 110 degree water in a five gallon bucket within about an hour. And I say 110 degrees because that's the average shower temperature that people use um, when they take their showers. So um, as you can see, the form factor is pretty small, it's slim. It allows me to pack it up rather easily and transport it rather easily. It's got a nice handle on it. And I have hanger bolts on here. Well, let me, let me give you a description of the box itself. So I basically use a piece of plywood, quarter inch, as a base, a backboard. And then I uh, fastened two by twos on top of that to, to create a frame. And then um, I'll show you the inside. This here is another quarter inch piece of plywood on the outside with hanger bolts and wing nuts to affix it to it for transport and, and storage. And that protects the glass on the outside and obviously anything from penetrating the glass and damaging the inside of the unit while it's being transported or, or whatever. So. Um, as I mentioned, uh, this is a, a combining of old school, very old school uh, technology and some new technology that we use to actually pump the water through. So just to give you a basic idea of how this works, the, I have a quarter inch copper tubing wound in concentric circles inside this box. I painted the entire inside black as well as the copper tubing. I started at the beginning. It's quarter inch copper tubing. It's about 50 or 60 feet and you can trim it to your needs. So what I did is I started with the copper tubing here. I drilled a hole in the side, I put it through, fished it through. And then as I mentioned, I went in concentric circles. The spacing is about a quarter inch between each circle. And on the side of each one, I had to drill a hole through the back plane and I used tie wraps, a tie wrap on each side four quadrants here I created. So tie wraps here, tie wraps here, and tie wraps here to hold it down, the copper tubing down to the back plate. And I bought the tempered glass. You can use it with or without the tempered glass. The tempered glass allows for a little bit of insulation. So how it works is the sun creates energy. The energy comes down, is absorbed by the black back plane and copper tubing and that creates heat. Um, the tempered glass actually creates a little bit of insulation so the, the heat energy comes down, is absorbed, and it's not allowed to reflect out. Any light that or energy that is reflected um, off of the, the back plane and the copper tubing is hindered by this. So it just keeps more of the heat inside. And what I did is I put a um, oven thermometer inside, I silicone that. So it gives me an idea of the temperature inside the box at all times. So the concept is pretty simple. If you've ever drank from a garden hose in the middle of the summer, you'll know when you go to turn it on, the hose has absorbed a lot of heat energy from the sun. And for the first 15 to 30 seconds when the water's on, um, you get hot water out. Nobody wants to drink it, so you have to sit there. You've done it before, probably. You hold it out, you feel it. It's hot, 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 and it gets colder and colder and colder as the water pushes through and absorbs the heat energy from the hose. It gets cold and then you can drink it. This works on the same concept. So it's very important to size it properly. Inside the bag, 
is our new technology. Old technology, new technology. You combine them and it makes magic. So inside the bag, we have some clear tubing that we use to connect to the inlet and the outlet of the copper tubing. We have a five watt, 12 volt pump. It's a submersible pump. And we have a 12 volt, 10 watt solar panel with a switch. So essentially how this works is you aim it at the sun, you lay down your solar panel in a sunny area, obviously, and you take your pump and you put it in, you lay it inside your five gallon bucket of water. You then connect this to your inlet or your outlet and you hook the other piece of hose up to the other side. And what you're doing is you're basically creating a recycle effect of the water. It's important, just like the garden hose, you know, if you run the water through it too quickly, it gets cold and it won't transfer any heat. The water will be going through too fast and absorbing the heat too fast. So it's important not to oversize your pump. So what you want is the water to flow through slowly enough that it can keep pace with this, the amount of energy that the sun is putting into it and creating the heat. So, as I mentioned, um, I use a 10 watt solar panel. I use a five watt submersible pump. And that creates just the right amount of flow to go through when the sun is full to get me to 110 degrees inside my bucket within an hour. Now on to the demonstration. So before we put this out into the sun, let's take a quick temperature reading and see what it is um, to begin the test. This is basically the ambient temperature in my garage right now, which yes, it's fairly hot. So it's about 87 degrees. And the water is a little cooler, just came out of the hose. Of course, the pipes are underground, so it's going to be a little cooler. All right, we're going to call it 83. So now let's take a look at our setup. I've already set it up. I put it uh, set at an angle out in the driveway. It's on its stand. I set the solar panel up in front of it um, at a slight angle as well. It's about 11 o'clock here uh, in Florida. I turn the switch on, submerge the pump. I'll go around and show you that. As you can see, it's in the bottom of the bucket. And the pump is running. As you can see, hopefully, it is pumping water through. So coming out a little warm it'll take a while I just put it out here about two minutes ago so we'll let uh, uh, the uh, system heat up a little bit and continue to run and I'll come back and check on it it has been an hour since we were out here last let's check the temperature you see there's some condensation building up I do have some weep holes I put a weep hole on each side uh, you probably can't see it because of the Sun maybe right there I put one on each side to let the condensation come out um, after it's done heating, so it does help. Let's check the temperature according to the thermostat inside. It's uh, about 125, 130. It's harder to tell. There's not many uh, ticks on the scale at that point. But everything's still going. Let's check the temperature, see what we got. So we're looking at 108, climbing.
110. You know, it depends on what portion of it uh, the laser hits, and it's probably 105 to 110, somewhere in that area. I will go around. Oh, you can see it's actually stopped pumping, probably due to the cloud. Oh, it just started back up while we were talking about it. So the sun just came out from behind a cloud. So that's one thing that will happen um, the, with the smaller solar panel. If you get occlusion from a cloud, it's going to uh, bring down the amperage enough to where it will stop pumping. It won't be enough. Ooh, that water is coming out hot. Let's see what it's coming out at right there at the source. About 117 and the water itself you know the accuracy accuracy of this thing I don't know it's about 110 give or take and actually 110 degrees is the average temperature of a shower oh yeah it's warm I actually use this to bathe in uh, just to try it out you know figure you're gonna build something you want to try it out so when our shower was out of commission I actually went out into the side yard and uh, I gave myself a shower and the water is uh, you know 110 degrees is surprisingly hot so it works well so hopefully now that I've demonstrated uh, the science behind this how it was built and how effective it can be um, hopefully um, if you have a need for it you'll be able to make it and get some use out of it Thank you for watching my video. I appreciate your support. Links to any of the products covered in my videos can be found below, as well as a link to my website, thetechieprepper.com. On the website, I actually go into a little more detail, uh, showing some uh, basic schematics, more detailed photos, and that type of thing for everything that I cover uh, within my YouTube videos. So don't be afraid to go there and check it out if you're interested. Uh, as you can probably tell from the video production, I do this as a hobby. I have a full-time job, but my YouTube videos I put out there to hopefully help people better prepare for emergencies or to endure emergencies with a little more comfort and capability. So that being said, if you are interested in my content or you liked it, please like, subscribe, hit the notification button so you know when I have a new video coming out. and. Uh, also important is to share with friends, family, anybody who you think might be interested in this content and you might want to help out, uh, you know, like I said, to better prepare for emergencies. So um, that's all I have for now. Thank you again for watching. I appreciate it. And hopefully I'll have something cool to show you next time. Thanks. Bye.